urban cooperative banks are some of the oldest financial institutions in India, some more than a hundred years old. Uh, they have a vast network. There are more than 1500 urban cooperative banks. Number of branches run into 11,000 and more than that. Uh, their share in deposits and advances though is low with about 5 lakh crore in deposits and about 3 lakh crore in advances. Now, on the one hand, this network can potentially be used for financial inclusion in a big way, uh, but there's been a bit of discomfort around these institutions. Uh, we've seen almost 365 cooperative banks fail since the 1970s when the Deposit Insurance Corporation came into play in India uh, and they've paid out more than 5,400 uh, crore in claims. Now why are we telling you all of this? We are telling you this because there's a battle playing out between the Reserve Bank of India which wants more control over cooperatives uh, and uh, you know states and the uh, bodies that are running these urban cooperative banks which would prefer uh, a large amount of the control to remain under the Cooperative Society Act. Now the RBI and the Cooperative Society Act of various states have always had dual control on these uh, institutions. Uh, this dates back many many decades. Uh, the first attempt made by the RBI to gain more control over urban cooperative banks uh, came in in 1965. At that time uh, there was a separate chapter added to the Banking Regulation Act uh, which brought in some of the functions of urban cooperative banks, things like uh, accounts, things like NPA recognition uh, within the RBI's regulatory fold. But a certain number of crucial aspects were still left out. Uh, these included governance, capital, audit, resolution. Now, over the years, the RBI has perhaps realized that unless you have control, particularly over governance, you can't really have control over these cooperative banks and hence you can't really use them for the purpose that you may want to, which is financial inclusion. Uh, this message hit home when PMC Bank failed uh, and that crisis left both the regulator and the government red faced because not only was it a large fraud, resolution took a long time because of the dual uh, regulation under which the bank actually functioned. And so in 2020, with the support of the government, uh, a new amendment was brought to the Banking Regulation Act. Uh, and one of the crucial aspects of this was that governance and capital were brought under the RBI's purview and the RBI then went on to issue a number of circulars uh, to these urban cooperative banks. Now the principle behind this amendment as explained to us by NS Vishwanathan who is a former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India and he recently chaired a committee on urban cooperative banks was that if you are a cooperative society acting as a bank then the bank function comes before the cooperative society function and hence you should be more amenable uh, to the Banking Regulation Act. Now, what has happened since then is that there are a number of challenges that have emerged. Some have gone into court uh, and we are naming a few courts uh, across the country where there are challenges and petitions pending. The Madras High Court, the Rajasthan High Court, the Madhya Pradesh High Court. In some of these states, uh, there is a stay on the circulars, uh, not the amendment, but the circulars that the RBI has issued. And the practical question that is being raised there is, are service standards governed by the RBI's regulations? Or are they governed by the Cooperative Society Act of that state and the bylaws of that particular cooperative society? Now, that's the practical question. Uh, the more sort of philosophical question there comes back to the amendment as to whether the amendment is impinging uh, on the right of states because remember the cooperatives uh, fall under the state list in the Constitution of India. Now, so far this is in high courts. If it goes to the Supreme Court, perhaps the issue of the amendment will be uh, taken up as well. Uh, but uh, for now, some states have chosen to stay the circulars that the RBI has issued. All of these cases are in various stages. There are other challenges as well. For instance, uh, Satish Marathe, who is on the RBI central uh, board, but is also a representative of the cooperative uh, banking segment, uh, says that there are appeals to the RBI to review a provision that the RBI has brought in that a CEO and an MD cannot have more than a 15-year tenure at the top of a cooperative uh, bank. Now, this is something that is true uh, also for other banks, but it's being challenged uh, or at least it's being uh, you know questioned in the case of cooperative banks. There are political challenges too. The Maharashtra government has suggested that they're going to review the Cooperative Act uh, to try and once again rest back control. Remember, Maharashtra has the largest number of cooperatives, so they have a big uh, stake in this entire debate. Why does all of this matter right now? 
Remember, we mentioned that there was a, a committee that had been set up to look at cooperative banks. That committee is saying that you should allow these cooperative banks to potentially expand uh, if these governance structures are now in place. Uh, they have suggested a number of things, an umbrella organization to help smaller cooperative banks grow. Uh, they have suggested new capital raising means for the larger cooperative banks, a tiered regulation depending on the size of deposits. And eventually, uh, they say that you should allow them to grow in terms of branches should they meet regulatory norms. But all of this, the RBI will only do uh, if it sees that it has greater control over the governance functioning of these cooperative banks and the risk of failures uh, is lower. Do go to Bloomberg Quint and read more about this story. It's a fascinating one.